Good morning and welcome to our online service. Really excited that you're here with us this morning. Can't wait to uh, join in with some worship together and Pastor Shane, he's gonna tear it up today with his message. It's gonna be very, very exciting. Uh, before we get into those things though, I wanna encourage you to just be connecting with us different ways. Say hi to us, say hi to each other on our chat features of the platform that you're watching. Also, there's prayer request links and giving links. We want you to be aware of those and find out the things that are going on and participate in those as you can. I wanna read some scripture this morning before we begin our worship. This is from Psalm 34, verse one through four. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Come. Let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me, freeing me from all my fears. Isn't that a good word? Father, we come to you this morning. We're thankful that we have this opportunity to exalt your name together. May we just lift up our hearts and lift up our voices in praise to you. And Lord, just speak to us. We open ourselves to you for whatever you want to say to us and how you want us to respond to your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray these things, amen.
Well, good morning, and thanks for tuning in again today. Last week, we had Pastor Dana sharing with us from Acts chapter 5, looking at the both boldness and the persecution of the early church. And this week, I want us to look at Acts chapter 6. So I want to encourage you to open your Bibles to Acts chapter 6. We're looking at verses 1 through 6. And as we look at this passage, the main thing I want us to see from this is that the early church at this point made a very crucial decision to choose the growth of God's kingdom over their own personal comfort. The simple fact is that most growth brings change, and oftentimes change can bring some personal discomfort for us. And we have to make a conscious choice to say, hey, I'm going to choose that growth, even though it's going to bring change that brings discomfort. So let's go ahead and look at what they had, at what Acts chapter 6 says. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists rose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said, it's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of spirit and wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now let's stop there for a second. So what's happened here is the Hellenists, those were the Greek Jews, the people that, remember, that when the church started, there were a bunch of people uh, that were in Jerusalem from other places. And many of them stayed there as the church was getting going. And that's why a lot of people were selling properties and that kind of thing to take care of these people. So, so they were there. And as the church continued to grow, there, some of the ministries and things that needed to happen were being overlooked. One of the main things was there was a daily distribution of food to the widows. And the Hellenists, the Greek Jews, kind of felt like, well, maybe their widows were being a little overlooked. They're probably not even on purpose, but the simple fact is the, the ones that lived in Jerusalem were known. People were making sure just it was being taken care of, probably just because on a, it was a more organic uh, thing. So they felt like it was being a little overlooked. So they bring this problem to the, the apostles, and the apostles say, hey, this is a need. We see this is a need, and it needs to be taken care of. But what we're going to do is we're going to have others take care of this so that we can focus on leading. We can focus on the preaching and praying and leading the church. We pick up verse 5. It says, And what they said pleased the whole gathering. Now stop there for a second, because I want to point out probably the most overlooked miracle in all of Acts. Um, Now this says it pleased the whole gathering. Some of your versions might say it pleased everyone. I, I, people look through the book of Acts for miracles all the time. I believe this is a miracle. This is the first and only time in all of church history that something the leaders decided pleased everyone. So I'm going to count that as a miracle. But it says it pleased the whole gathering. And then it says they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy, Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them, and the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests became obedient to the faith. So what we see here is they said, hey, bring us some people, we will examine them, see if they fit the description, And we'll lay hands on them, and we will charge them with the responsibility of getting this ministry done. And that's what took place. And what does it say happens as a result of that? The church continued to grow. See, if the people had chosen to choose their own comfort over this this decision by leadership to make some changes, the church would have probably been halted for a period, but instead it continued to grow. So let's look at some things that we see from this passage that when a church grows, what do we see happen? Okay, The first thing we see happen is that there's going to be grumbling and discontent when a church is growing. Right? It says that the number of disciples is increasing, and so the people saw a problem that was coming of that, and so they grumbled and they, they complained. 
Now, we have a tendency to think of grumbling and discontent as always being a negative thing. I'm going to suggest to you that it isn't, that there is a healthy way to grumble and complain, and there's a negative way to grumble and complain. An unhealthy way is when we see a problem, we, we complain, but we don't complain to the right people. We don't complain to the people who are in charge of that. We don't complain to the people who can do something about it. Instead, what do we do? We gossip. And we complain to, to other people to try to get them to see things from our side. And we never actually take the problem to directly to the person. Or we complain to one person hoping that they maybe will tell someone who will tell someone who will tell a leader. And then by the time it gets to the leader, it's this vague concept and they don't even know what to do with it. But the healthy way is to take it directly to them. And so they brought this to the apostles so that the apostles could deal with that. So we're always going to have grumbling and discontent. Anytime there's a change, anytime there's growth, because growth brings change, right? And why does that cause grumbling and discontent? Because what was is no more. Whenever something changes, what was is no more. For, so for some people, that's always going to be a bit of a problem. It's always going to be a bit of a discomfort. Things change. And the truth is that most people are not welcome to change and the discomfort that comes with it. See, we all say we want growth, right? I Very rarely do I meet a Christian who says, you know, I don't want the church to grow. Everyone says they want the church to grow, but the truth is we want it to grow here. But when here, when it comes down to it and the changes it requires in our life and the changes it requires in the things around us, sometimes we really don't want it if we're really honest with ourselves because we like things the way they are. And it's actually okay to admit that, but then to say, okay, God, help me to overcome that and let's work together as a church to overcome that so that we can continue to grow, continue to move forward. I mean, we see that within our own families, right? Any of you that are part of a growing family, when you were by yourself before you got married, you did everything exactly the way you wanted. Then you get married, you bring someone in the mix, and it starts a little bit of grumbling and complaining, right? Then you finally get that all solved and put together, and you decide to bring another human being into the mix, and you decide to have a baby, and that causes some grumbling and complaining. You start to feel like you got a little bit of a handle on that. What do you do? You maybe decide to have another one, right? If you're anything like me, and you just love change so much, you just keep having them, and now you've got five kids, and your life is just full of change, right? <coughs> so, so that's just part of anything that's growing. There's always going to be change. Some churches don't accept that. And so what they, what they do is they, they want to keep everything the way it is was, and as a result, they, they never grow out of it. And what happens is they kind of have like this pastor who be, is supposed to be like a jack of all trades. He's supposed to be able to do the teaching and the planning and the serving and the visiting and the hosting and the counseling. And he's supposed to have janitorial and clerical and maintenance skills and landscaping skills. He's supposed to be able to do it all. And, they kinda, and that just makes it kind of comfortable for everybody. But the truth is they never grow because they're not willing to say, hey, if we're ever going to grow, this can't continue. We have to have multiple dual leadership, a plurality, if you will, of leadership. Whenever a church expects the pastor or one or two leaders to be at everything, to work with everything, to work with every age group, to plan everything or run everything, the church simply can't grow. It needs a plurality of leaders. It needs a plurality of people serving, using the gifts that they have in order for it to grow. It also means that it, when done right, a church can grow bigger, but continue to grow smaller. What do I mean by that? Well, the more people you bring into leadership, the more people are brought together in smaller communities, no matter how large a church grows. And that smaller community of 10 or 20 or 30 or 50, or depending on how many people a leadership can kind of a leader can kind of handle within their shepherding abilities, that group of people become even tighter knit than they ever would have had they remained one larger group. But there's a responsibility in the members of any church that's going to grow 
to accept the changes. Not only to accept the changes, but to embrace them at some level and ask how they can be a part of helping it grow. The second thing that needs to happen that we see here is that the leaders need to lead. The leaders need to lead. See, the apostles could have at this point said, oh, this needs to be done? Okay, we'll go take care of it. We'll do it. They could have buckled under the weight of the pressure of the Hellenistic Jews. They, they could have said, oh, we want everyone to be happy, and if you're, if you're unhappy with this, we will take care of it. We will make sure it happens. But they didn't do that. Notice they, didn't, they put the responsibility back on them. And they said, you help us with this, and we then will delegate this responsibility to some other people. They knew that they needed to keep their focus where God had called them. And, and leaders know, need, understand that they need to stay focused where they're called. And if they try to do everything, they're going to fail. And you see, the simple fact is new challenges are always going to call for new styles of leadership. Growth always brings new challenges. And so there's always going to be a call for new styles of leadership. So a growing church is constantly undergoing new changes and new styles of leadership. Where once one pastor oversaw and was at everything, well, eventually he has to bring up some volunteers, and those volunteers do a lot of the different things. And that pastor works more prominently just with that group of volunteers. And eventually some areas require a whole group of volunteers. And eventually that group of volunteers... It requires so much more that maybe one person needs to be paid and, and then eventually it, it can just continue growing and then eventually there's multiple layers of volunteers under them. And there's always these kind of constant changes within a growing church body. And that's something that we always have to be willing to embrace. And that's tough. I mean, I saw, I saw people go through that here with Mountain View Fellowship. You know, when we first started, I was at everything. I taught every week. I did everything. I, did. I took two years where I only took one Sunday off each year. And people, people kind of got used to that. But as things change, some people had a harder time with that. Some people didn't like the, those changes. But for the most part, even though there was discomfort with it, people grew with it. And we've been able to continue moving forward. And as we move forward as a church, to truly be the kind of church that I believe God calls us to be, we have to release more and more leadership into the hands of lay leaders within the church, out of the hands of paid pastors, and more and more into the hands of lay leaders. If we don't do that, one, we're going to have a, church, a staff have to have a staff of 25 paid people just to do that. We can't withstand that. Secondly, I don't believe that's what God calls the church to do. I think God calls the church to have leaders who equip the saints for works of service, as Paul says in Corinthians. We have to challenge people. We have to challenge people to be raised up. Third, when the church grows, more people are given the opportunity to serve. More people are given the opportunity to serve. Look at Stephen and the others. They were just regular guys at the church. There wasn't some special thing about them. They were just regular guys. They were asked to step in to something small, and they accepted that challenge. And as they accepted that challenge and as they stepped into that act of service and as they were faithful with little things, God increased them and God increased the church. And when the leaders were able to step back and say, we don't need to do it all, but we're going to equip other people to do it, that gave opportunity for people to step up. Gave opportunity for people to see their giftedness, for people to see their strengths and their ability to serve in God's kingdom in powerful ways. You know, that may have caused some grumbling among different groups. There might have been some of the widows who were used to being served by a certain person. 
And they, they like that certain person, but now Stephen steps in and the others, they step in and as they've organized it, they, they kind of put someone specific in charge of a different group and the, some of those widows didn't like that the, what, the person that used to serve them isn't serving them anymore and they might have been grumbling about that. But the truth is at some level they had to choose whether or not they were going to accept the discomfort in order to be a part of watching God's kingdom grow. And that continued to open the doors for God to move in greater ways and reach more people. I mean, let's face it. Small church is more comfortable. It just is. I, I love small church. I love the idea that nothing changes, that everything's the same, that I always know what to expect. I, I, I love the idea that the same people I'm working with and, and spending time with are going to be the same people for, for a long period of time. And I know every Sunday it's pretty much going to be the same thing. There's, there's things I enjoy about that. It's just comfortable. When we see change, sometimes it just causes stress in us and a little discomfort. We have to choose, are we going to open ourselves up and say, God, this is just uncomfortable for me. But I'm going to trust you, and I want to be a part of it. Not only am I going to accept it, but I'm going to step into it. And I'm going to be faithful with the little things you're asking me to change so that I can be a part of growing your kingdom. Because that's more important than my comfort. You know, as we grow... We have more and more opportunities for people to step into leadership in the small things. And the more people step into leadership in the small things, it leads to bigger and bigger things. God's kingdom grows exponentially when many people step forward into little things versus when one person just steps forward into big things. You know, I... Um, when I think about this idea of stepping forward into little things, I think about this idea <coughs> of how God uses it. There's some people that come to my mind. I think about my, my buddy Doug. My buddy Doug from my last church, he, Doug started out on the setup team of that church. It was a portable church. We had to set up and tear down every week. and So that's how he thought he could volunteer. So he came and started volunteering there. Well, eventually his wife started getting involved in a drama ministry the church had, and eventually she led that drama ministry, and eventually Doug got involved enough and started growing enough, he started leading a small group, and they started volunteering every now and then with children and, and young adult stuff, youth. Eventually, Doug became an elder of that church, and, and even from there, eventually they became full-time missionaries. Now I look at their, them as a family and they've got three adult children who, who serve the Lord wholeheartedly, who love the Lord. You just see God moving through them in vibrant ways. And it'd be easy to look at Doug and his family and say, well, you know, God just had his hand on them in a very special way. Or man, I wish my family was that alive and that vibrant in their faith. You know, if only they were that way. But you know how they got that way? By them just taking one small step in the little things, being faithful with those little things, and God giving him greater things. When we are faithful with the little, God gives us more. You know, my own story is like that. I, you know, I sometimes feel inadequate. I know pastors who, they have this story of when, how they knew they were called to ministry where like the heavens opened up and pe angels sang, oh! You know, and, 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 and I like, I don't have a story like that. Or they're like second, third, or fourth generation pastors. It's just like runs through their blood. That's not me. You know, I became a pastor. I just kept stepping into little things. And as I was faithful to little, God continued to increase it and give me more. I think about Pastor Mike Smith. You know, Pastor Mike started out as a volunteer. I needed someone to do something with the teenagers we had during our evening study before we even started as a Sunday morning service. In an evening study, I got, we got like six teenagers. Can you just do something with them? And so he started just teaching them. He had no training, never been to school for, for ministry or of any kind, anything like that. And he said, yeah, I'll do that. And eventually that 
grew and we had more kids. And he said, you know, I feel like we need to have a youth night. And I said, yeah, let's do a youth night. And to have a youth night, he needed some more leaders. So he went and got found two or three volunteer leaders and they started building a leadership team. And, and that continued to grow. The youth ministry grew and eventually it got big enough. We felt like, you know, we should get, pay him a little something for the lot of time he's putting into it. And eventually it grew to a point where we said, would you want to do this full time? And Mike quit his job and came and did that. He did that for a few years. And, and then eventually he, we started a campus and Mike steps in to say, yeah, I'll be the, the pastor of that campus. And now Mike's the teaching pastor at one of the largest churches in the whole state of Utah. You know, I watch him online and he's, and I think about him on that camera stage, that little camera stage. And now he's like on this thing with like fog machines and lights. And I'm like, hey, I knew him before he was cool. But, you know, so, so it's just, but he's just continued stepping in to these things. I think of my buddy Luke. Luke was a t in 10th grade. He used to ride his bike back and forth to church. And after seeing this kid ride his bike to church like eight times, I, I was a youth pastor. I thought, you know, I need, to, I need to just talk to this kid. So I started getting to know him a little bit. And after a while, I started discipling him. And eventually I said, hey, would you want to help me with my ju the junior high. And he was in high school. I didn't normally do that. But I said, why don't you come and do games? And he started doing games at the junior high night. Next year, I said, you know, you're still a senior in high school, but why don't I, w would you want to be a leader in the junior high ministry? And he was a leader. By the end of that year, he was teaching. And by the end of that year, uh, he became a full youth leader and basically came and was helping me run uh, the whole thing the year after he graduated from high school. And a couple years later, that church, they asked me if I would be the associate pastor. And so I went to be the associate, the associate pastor and had to leave my youth ministry position. But I said, the only way I'll do that is if you let me bring Luke up as the youth pastor, because I think he can, he can do it. And I'll watch him and, and work with him. And Luke stepped into that position a year out of high school and, or two years out of high school and stepped into the, a, a very part-time position, I eventually left that church, and when I did, I said, you know, I really recommend you bring you, you, Luke on as a full-time youth pastor, and Luke stepped up to be the full-time youth pastor. To now, today, Luke's the senior pastor at that church, and it all started by him just taking little steps, being faithful in little things. And, you know, those are just four stories. I could go on and on about story after story I see of people in their life who step in to be faithful in the little things. When leaders step out of the way and say, I don't have to do it all. I don't have to be the one to do it all. Even if that makes some people uncomfortable, I have a bigger vision of growing God's kingdom. God has called us to bigger things, and we're going to do everything it can to we can to grow God's kingdom. So I will step out of the way and let someone else. And the more we do that, the more we see God's kingdom grow. And you know, I want to just close with this. In a few weeks, it might be four weeks, it might be eight, I'm not sure, I don't know how long. But we're going to get back to some new kind of normal. And I truly believe God is calling MVF Church to really move forward in growing his kingdom, to really step into more so that we can be a part of watching his kingdom grow. And the question is, is are each and every one of us as individuals, are we going to embrace that discomfort of the change? Are we not only going to embrace it, but are we going to step into it and say, I will be a part? What can I do? Because here's what it takes. It takes each and every one of us being willing to step in and say, I will be faithful with the little things. And as we are faithful with the little things, God will give us bigger things. And as God gives each and every one of us bigger things, no matter how little or big those things might be, amazing things can happen. And so I'm just going to ask you to do this. I'm, I'm going to pray, and while I'm praying, if you feel like maybe God is calling you to step into a little thing, maybe you're a, a tender, you've been coming to church for years, but you really haven't stepped into regular Sunday service, weekly service, not Sunday necessarily, but serving on a regular basis. 
And you want to ready to say, yeah, I want to serve somewhere on a regular basis. Or maybe you've been serving, doing, doing a, a, a little thing, and you're like, hey, I feel like God's blessed me in this, but I'm ready to step into something bigger. Whatever that is, I'm going to encourage you while I'm praying to just type us a response and say, hey, I want to step in and be faithful with something little. I want to step in and be faithful with something little. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you give us the strength to be faithful in little things. Give us the strength to embrace change, to embrace the, the discomfort of growth. Not so MVF can grow, not so, so our personal ministry can grow, not even so that we even can grow, although that is a huge benefit of that personally but God, so that your kingdom can grow because we need to make conscious decisions to grow your kingdom, to be a part of that growth. You're gonna do your work anyway. God, I ask that we would be willing participants, eager participants in the growth of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing Hello and thank you once again for being with us during our online service. I really hope it was a blessing to you, to your family, and your friends. Now, we love to hear from you here at MBF Church. And whatever it is that you're watching this video, either be on Facebook, YouTube, or mbfchurch.tv, we would love to hear from you. We're going to put a link to our Connect Cards and prayer request where you can let us know what we can be praying for you or if you just want to let us know a little bit about yourself we would love to connect with you once again all the staff and the pastors are willing and ready uh, to speak with you and especially during this situation help you get through the rebuilding part of our lives as we journey together trusting our lord jesus Thank you once again for enjoying the service with us. We'll be praying for you and your family as we continue this journey together. May the Lord bless you all. Have a nice week. Goodbye. Thank you.